Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 14 entitled Artificial Ventilations. As always, this is Keith Woodmeyer with Wayne County Units. I'm going to get started off with positive pressure ventilations. <clears throat> After ensuring that your patient has an open and adequate airway, you must assess breathing. If your patient's breathing is inadequate or absent, you'll need to begin breathing for that patient. When a patient is not breathing, he um, has only the oxygen-rich blood remaining in his lungs and bloodstream to survive on. You can assist breathing by forcing air into the patient's lung. This action is called positive pressure ventilation. Mouth-to-mask -mask ventilation, mouth-to-barrier ventilation, and bag valve mask ventilations are some of the methods used to deliver positive pressure ventilations. However, we will only, in this class, discuss bag valve mask ventilations. Mouth-to-mask -mask and mouth-to-barrier are not very common, nor is the, um, the demand valve that is discussed in the book. The difference between uh, normal ventilations and positive pressure ventilations um, include uh, air movement, blood movement, and esophageal opening pressure. Now we're going to get started on the Selix maneuver. Um, this is cricoid pressure. If positive pressure ventilation is performed too rapidly or with too much volume, air can enter the stomach. The cricoid cartilage is the lowermost cartilage of the larynx. It is the only complete ring of cartilage in the larynx. When pressure is applied to the cricoid cartilage, the trachea is pushed backward and the esophagus is compressed, um, hopefully to the point of being completely closed, against the cervical vertebrae. Well, what's this do? This helps prevent the patient from, uh, well, first off, it helps prevent gastric distension. It helps prevent air buildup from inside the stomach, which if you get air buildup from inside the stomach, eventually the air will want to come out of the stomach. And when the air comes out of the stomach, it brings all sorts of gobbledygook that goes all over you. When forming cricoid pressure, we're going to follow these steps. Um, first, you're going to use your index finger, locate the Adam's apple on the front of the neck, slowly move your finger downward until you feel a depression just below the depression is a firm ring of cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. Make sure the cricoid cartilage is between your thumb and index finger and apply firm backward pressure. The cricoid cartilage should remain in the, in the midline position. It should not move to either side. Maintain pressure until the patient begins breathing on their own. A tube has been inserted in the patient's trachea by an ALS provider where the patient becomes responsive by moving, coughing, or gagging. All right, let's get started on Oops, I'm sorry, here's an example of cricoid pressure. You can see the steps that they're using to, um, to perform that. Let's get started on bag valve mask ventilation. A bag mask or bag valve mask device is a self-inflating bag with one-way valve and an oxygen reservoir. A soft transparent mask with an air-filled cuff is attached to the bag. The one-way valve prevents the patient's exhaled air from re-entering the bag. The reservoir is an oxygen collector allowing the delivery of high concentration of oxygen to the patient. Although bag valve mask, BVM, ventilations can be done using one person, it is optimal to use two rescuers. It's difficult for one person to maintain a proper position of the patient's head, make sure the mask is sealed tightly on the patient's face, and compress the bag at the same time. When two people are available, one, task, one takes responsibility for compressing the bag, the other is responsible for maintaining the airway and maintaining the seal of the mask. Although a bag mask can be used to assist ventilations in patients with inadequate breathing, it is more commonly used to ventilate the, the non-breathing patient. When a, when a bag valve mass is not connected to supplemental oxygen, 21% oxygen, which is room air, is delivered to the patient. If the BVM connected to supplemental oxygen and uh, reservoir is present on the bag, between 90 and 100% of oxygen can be delivered to the patient. Now 
All right, we're going to start off going over one rescuer bag valve mask techniques. Step one, connect the bag to the mask. Uh, step two, place the patient on his back. Open the airway with the head tilt chin lift. Step three, position the narrow portion of the mask over the bridge of the nose. Position the wide portion of the mask over the patient's lower lips and chin. Lower the mask over the patient's nose and mouth. Position uh, yourself at the top of the patient's head. Create a face to mask seal by forming the C. Um, remember the CE technique we discussed in CPR. With your other hand, squeeze the, uh, the bag until you see gentle rise. Deliver each ventilation over one second. Watch, the, watch for rise and fall of the patient's chest with each ventilation. Stop ventilation when you see adequate chest rise. Allow the patient to exhale between breaths. Step two, ventilate once every three to five seconds. Uh, for an infant or child, once every five to six seconds for an adult. Step seven, when possible, connect the bag um, to oxygen at 15 liters per minute and detach the reservoir. <clears throat> Step, or I'm sorry, two rescuer CPR, or I'm sorry, two rescuer uh, ventilations is going to be comparable. The only difference is one rescuer will be tasked with the sole responsibility of maintaining a seal and maintaining the airway. The other rescuer will be tasked with uh, with doing ventilations, utilizing the bag. All right, let's get started on adequate and inadequate artificial ventilations. Artificial ventilations, also called rescue breathing, is adequate when the chest rises and falls with each artificial ventilation. The rate of the ventilation is sufficient. Sufficient rates are about 10 to 12 times per minute for an adult, once every five to six seconds, and about 12 to 20 times per minute for an infant or ch and children, once every three to five seconds. The patient's heart rate improves and the patient's color improves. Inadequate artificial ventilations. Um, Maybe notice if the chest does not rise and fall with each ventilation, the ventilation rate is too slow or too fast. The heart rate does not improve with ventilation, and the patient's color does not improve. If the chest uh, does not rise and fall with bag valve mass ventilation, recess the patient. Start by recessing the patient's head position, reposition the airway, and try again to ventilate. The tidal volume delivered to the patient depends on the on a tight mask seal and adequate compression of the bag. If an air leak, if air is leaking around the mask, um, you may need to reposition your mask. Um, if air is escaping underneath the mask, again, reposition your fingers. Incomplete bag compressions will result in the delivery of inadequate tidal volume to the patient. This can occur if the bag mask is larger than the EMT's hand or small and only one hand is used to squeeze the bag. The patient's chest does not rise and fall during bag valve masks. Recheck the technique you are using to squeeze the bag. If the patient's chest does not rise, check for an obstruction, lift the patient's jaw, and suction the airway as needed. If the chest still does not rise, use a different method of artificial ventilation, such as pocket mask, flow restricted oxygen powered ventilator. Again, like I said, this is not common in this area. However, we do we will go over blind insertion airway devices. Next we have special considerations. Um, a laryngectomy is a surgical tube. As, I'm sorry, surgical removal of the larynx. A person who has a laryngectomy breathes through a stoma. Stoma is an artificial opening. A, um, a tracheal stoma is a permanent opening at the front of the neck that extends from the skin surface into the trachea. It opens the trachea to the atmosphere. A tracheostomy is the surgical formation of an opening into the trachea. There are many reasons why a person may have a tracheal stoma. A throat tumor or infection, severe injury to the neck or mouth, a disease or infection that affects swallowing, the need for long-term breathing assistance with a mechanical ventilator. Patients who have a stoma who have a stoma breathe through the opening in the neck because it is their airway. If artificial ventilation is required, it should be delivered through the stoma. Follow these steps uh, to perform mass stoma breathing. 
If present, remove any garments, scarf, necktie, covering the stoma. Place a pediatric face mask or barrier device on the patient's neck over the stoma. Make an artificial seal around the stoma. Slow, um, slowly blow into the opening of the one-way valve. Again, that's if you're using a one-way valve device. Um, slowly bag into the stoma as necessary. We'll go into that next slide. Um, some of the BVMs may actually connect to the stoma. So uh, if this is the case, uh, you connect the bag mask device to the patient's tracheostomy just as you would an uh, ET tube. Squeeze the bag while watching for chest rise. Allow the patient to exhale passively. If you're unable to ventilate through the tracheostomy, suction it with, uh, with French suction and then try to ventilate again. Seal the patient's nose and mouth and reattempt ventilation. Release the seal to allow the patient's exhale. Dentures that fit in the patient's mouth should be left in place. If they become loose or dislodged, remove them from the mouth because they can become a foreign body airway obstruction. When you ventilate a patient with their dentures removed, it is more difficult to obtain a seal. The airway of infants and young children differs from that of older children and adults. Infants younger than six months of age breathe primarily through their noses and not their mouth. Their airway is much smaller, allowing greater opportunity for air obstruction. One such airway obstruction is their tongue, which is large compared to the size of their mouth. The supporting cartilage of child's trachea is less developed than in adults, making it prone to compression with an improper neck positioning. Be sure to place an infant's head in a neutral position. The narrowest part of the child's airway is the cricoid cartilage, which is lower in the airway than in, in adults. These differences allow for easier obstruction of the airway of an infant or child. Gastric distension, uh, or swelling, is common when ventilating infants and children. When providing positive pressure ventilations, avoid using excessive volume. Use only enough volume to cause gentle chest rise. And this concludes chapter 14. Um, let's see here. Again, the mouth mask is not very common, although there is a KVM sheet for that, and nor is the demand valve anymore. Um, they are discussed, but again, not common in this area. Thank you very much for listening to chapter 14, Artificial Ventilations.